Welcome to my video on organizing your files in D2L. So I'm going to show you two different versions. This right now is the course shell that I made for my hybrid uh, 2530 class. So the file structure is a little bit different, but I think some of the things might be helpful, especially just to try to give students more information as we transition to uh, remote learning. So if you look at my content, um, all of our uh, our content is based on weeks. So um, my other classes are a little bit different, but so in the week uh, structure, and the reason why they do this, it does make sense. It's a learning module. So these are the things that you would be doing for the week. And if you click on the first one, uh, you're going to see the learning guide. And then the student is supposed to be able to click through these things, right? So this is the discussion I would want you to do. And then um, here's a some video notes. Um, all of the classes, from my understanding, are now ma making these HTML pages to link to the videos instead of just putting a video link. Um, here's an assignment. This oop, I must have hit it twice. Sorry. This is an assignment. This is what I wanted to show you. So when you create an assignment folder, you might want to put some um, instructions in there. I hyperlinked right here to the file. Um, you can add an attachment. So if you wanted to like say, hey, this is what we're going to be turning in, you can add the file right to that assignment folder and uh, the students will uh, see that. Now, my view looks a little bit different because I'm still in the instructor view. If I was in the student view, um, it would give me a spot to turn in the assignment, not to edit the folder. So that's that's one of the reasons why I think the modules are um, stressed so much in the online situations because they want students to be able to to go through the, the list and complete them. When you are a student, those items get checked off um, as you work your way down the page. So if you go back on the crumb trail here to my week one, even though I'm now on prep assignment two, what the student would see is as they work through these things, these um, check marks uh, get to be um, green or it's maybe it's a green dot. But you can see how you work through um, the whole week instead of the way I have my other classes. The reason why I wanted to highlight this is because it might be nice um, for students to see assignments that way, especially if you have not done um, any turning in any work on D2L in the past. Let me take you to one of my classes now. I'm going to take you into college algebra. Okay. And my structure looks a little bit different in this class. If you hit my content here, what you're going to see on the left-hand side, their table of contents, is I have some course information. I've got some files. Let me close this as we, can I make it? No. I don't think I have the whole thing lit there. I've got uh, my MyLab math um, files in there, like the Pearson links are in there, and then I categorize them by each test. I made hyperlinks from um, my Pearson uh, site into, into the D2L. It works very nicely. They can find everything. Um, video notes. Let me see my video notes here. So I've got the same thing. So instead of having the uh, link like I had in the other class, this is going to directly um, open a video for students so they can see it right there inside the course shell. Okay, I've the, the this, here's the problem with this now though, is that I can't just use the arrows the way that the online students would do because I'm now in this uh, in this video. So you'd have to go back to the crumb trail or back to the home page. Now my students don't mind it because they have um, been doing this the whole semester. So when um, when they get to a hyperlink in my little announcements here, they have a choice. If they don't like keep going back, you can just open this in a new tab. And I think that's what a lot of them do, but I give them the choice. And then you can see my calendar. Oops, you actually have to open it again, my bad. There you go. So I don't like all those clicks. That's why I don't always do that. So that's how I organize my files a little bit differently in um, like college algebra versus 
again, an online class. So we're in a remote learning situation, which obviously is new. So you might not want to have the week structure or you might want to like you might just say, hey, I want you to do these certain things during this week. And, um, you know, then we'll we'll make it to the end. And some of you might be like me and say, hey, I want to uh, just to make these little modules. I call them folders. Um, and if the ATG people are listening, um, I know that they're really modules, but I call them folders. And some of you have asked me about tests. So if you um, want to um, put a tests in there, and I'm going to go ahead and hide this from my students so they don't um, think that I've actually <laughs> published a test, um, you could put a uh, time and release on there. But before I do that, I want to show you, some people asked me about distributing multiple copies of tests only to certain um, students. And what you would have to do is first, you'd have to do this first, is you'd have to go into the groups, go into the groups and make yourself a new category. Let's see, I would be on test three in this class. So I'm just going to call it test three. And I'm not going to bother um, describing this because students aren't going to really see this anyway. Um, I would use um, the number of groups and I probably would do no auto enrollments, but um, because I am uh, videotaping and I don't want to have my students name show, I'm not going to do that right now. I have 24 students in this class, so maybe you'd want to release, you know, three forms. And the reason why I would pick the groups is so that I could separate my students if this is how I was going to do it. Um, I'm going to have, yeah, no restrictions there. So I'm going to make three groups and it is just going to randomize my students in the groups. And I don't want a discussion area. You do not want um, an assignment because that would be a group assignment, not an individual assignment. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to get go ahead and hit save. And what it should do is it made, yep, it made my three groups and it's got eight members in each. OK, so let's go back to the assignment then. So if I went back to my content. And I'm in my test folder. And now let's say I want to um, upload a file here. Let's see, computer. I'm just going to put my cover sheet in. I'm not going to actually really put a test in. So that's one way to do it. Another reason why I like this style is because you can uh, just drag in. Let me just put another cover sheet in there. You can just drag in the file from your uh, computer and it, it will be there. Now, this is hidden from the students, but you probably want to put restrictions on this. So if I was, uh, you know, pretending I'm going to give this as a test to my students, I'm going to go ahead and edit the properties in place. I want to add dates and restrictions. So if you want to have this open for a you know, certain time, you know, we'll make it the 25th. OK, three o'clock is fine. We'll just pretend that that's when my class starts. And then you want to do the same date, probably two hours later. Something like that. And then if you scroll down, it says release conditions. So you're going to go ahead and hit create. And the condition that you want to have is a little bit down the list. It's underneath class list. It's group enrollment. So you're going to go to group enrollment and you're going to select a group. So you're on, um, you know, test three here, group one. So what that means is that only the students who are enrolled in that group one are going to see that file. They, they're the only ones who are going to have access to it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit update. And then you could grab your second file and I'm going to again hit the edit properties in place. And we are pretending that my test is on March 25th at three o'clock. Do the end date because that's a hard um, end for the folder or for the file to be open. We'll have to make a folder here in a second. And then you're going to go and hit uh, create. Again, you want to select condition type. It's underneath class list. You want to go to group enrollment and we'll select group two. And so you could keep doing that for however many groups and forms of the test that you would want. Oops, what did I do? I hit create again, didn't I? Oops, I forgot to hit update. 
There we go. So you can see that they're in there. Now, if I was really giving um, some kind of document like this to students to do for a test, I would um, upload a PDF file and not a Word document because some of them are not going to have Word. Sometimes Word acts kind of wonky, especially with um, the math uh, type that we use uh, when students open it on, you know, a Mac or something or an old version of Word. It could look a lot different and the characters sometimes get skewed. So I would for sure do a PDF file. Now students are just going to get the file from here. They have to um, grab or to turn it in you need to make an assignment folder and I did make a video on making assignments already. I'll just go ahead and do another one here real quick. So I'm going to put in here test three and you're going to want to write your instructions here. Okay, maybe I should just say give them some direction, right? <laughs> give students some directions of what you want, what you expect, that maybe you want the file to be a PDF. That's what I recommend. Um, pictures are pretty, pretty big these days, and it's going to take a long time for students to upload. And then likewise, it's going to take you a long time for you to download those files so that you can access them and grade them. So I probably wouldn't do that. Um, here, I don't know, and we'll see if you have the add attachment. Um, so it looks like you could do a file, a link, or an existing activity. Let's see what happens with link. No, that's like a URL link. Let's see existing activity what comes up. Oh, everything comes up. So maybe you hit content. I don't know how that would work with the different forms. I don't think that I would do that. I think I would come up here and um, tell people where to get the, the file. I don't know if it'll grab the, the right one or not, or if you have to link to all of them and then they're just frozen out of some of them, which is entirely possible, but could be frustrating. So I'm not quite sure how that would work, but this is the only way that I could figure out that you could um, assign things to different students. So I only keep the most recent um, submission group category. I don't want a category. I'm actually not going to tie anything to this. So I would go ahead and hit save and close. So in the announcements, that's probably where I would tell people where to look for these things um, based on, you know, kind of how I did here in my prepare for the next class. When I'm doing these, all I do is in the editor, like if I was going to do review my calendar for updates, I'll show you how I grab that. I just hit this little link button. You can um, hit insert stuff too, but that's a little bit more broad. If you hit link, it's going to be inside the class already. So like if I go to my content, you know, when I want to look at a certain uh, video note and you can see now why I have them all organized like this because the, the list gets really long is I can go ahead and grab a certain video or what have you. So if I wanted them to watch, I don't know, video 25, that's what I would um, have written there. So I hope that helps uh, at least give you a little bit of idea how you might organize your, um, your files and your folders or your modules in D2L. Thanks for watching. Wait a minute, it looks like I forgot one little thing. When I was in my content, I hid that file of the test from the students. You're going to want to release that so that it's unhidden, right? So I had this test it was hidden from the students. You're going to want to check that and make it visible again, of course, if you wanted to um, to give that exam. Uh, thinking about this a little further, I probably would just come clean that there were that many uh, forms of the test and have the students uh, just go to the folder for the test, not uh, hyperlink it in the instructions. So I would say to, you know, look into the folder that says tests and uh, you might have to educate them on where those things are, like when you meet with them live and um, explain all that to them so that they can do that. I know for my um, my first class for my uh, intermediate algebra students, they're meeting, they're, they're, they have a test because we were supposed to have a test on the Thursday that we shut down. So I'm going to meet with them at the beginning and just kind of tell them where everything is. And then I'm going to let them go ahead and uh, proceed. And I haven't decided if I'm going to release a file yet or if I'm going to have them 
do a test on my lab math and turn in their work. Um, I'm still kind of thinking about that and I'll let, I'll keep you posted and let you know what I decide. Thanks.